Hi everyone! Hi! So with my colleague Delphine de Batman, we hope that uh, you are well and you are all safe. Uh, please know that uh, we really miss you um, and we hope to see you again very soon. And before that, we would very much like to thank Gabriele, to thank Mimi, uh, to thank the committee and the whole team who organized the conference. Uh, many thanks for keeping our community alive and uh, for giving us the opportunity to keep in touch and to talk. So let's start and, and see you in a few minutes, Delphine. Okay. So, uh, as everyone knows, when the pandemic struck and uh, when museums closed their doors in 2020, uh, the digital transformation of our institutions was maybe the, the main solution, uh, at least the obvious one. But why? Um, you all know um, the epidemic context spread the term social distancing and to tackle this uh, we had no choice but to find ways to keep in touch with the public, ways to maintain moments of collective emotions with regards to, mu to music obviously but also with regards to, to knowledge and to heritage. One solution was to use social media uh, which is efficient, of course, uh, for broadcasting interviews, for uh, broadcasting online participative games and other uh, short content. But um, at least faced with the huge amount of content posted online by museums all over the world, often very creatively, we decided here in Paris to take our time and to refine uh, a strategy that I would call, if I may, sustainable. I mean that with, with our scientific and educational team, we, we all came to the table, uh, a virtual table via Zoom, to talk about these issues. Can a museum really live and fulfill its fundamental missions remotely? And should this virtual existence serve only to mitigate the crisis? Or is it a chance to invent sustainable, uh, lasting content that remains attractive beyond a crisis situation? These questions involved with thinking our museum's communication strategy. Uh, for a long time, uh, at least by us, for us, uh, digital communication was above all a marketing issue and therefore managed by a marketing team. But what if it were now possible to reconcile a museum's digital communication and its scientific missions? Our modest efforts were focused on a small number of projects during the lockdown. First, a lineup of remote guided tours that Delphine will present, and second, two films, uh, two films, the first about the museum's electric guitars collection, a film called Guitareros. With, with artist Seb Martel, uh, that I will come on, on with you today, and a second film about the unreleased program of a concert for violin and piano that Proust organized in 1909 at the Ritz Hotel in Paris. So let me introduce you those films with an extract of the Guitar Eros film. Guitarama. Je suis pas sûr du nom. Un peu Télérama. Quoi. En même temps, Guitarama. Panorama de guitare. C'est pas hors sujet. Hein. Et...
Ah voilà. Explore 1. Juillet 2020. Dans la réserve. La première guitare qui me sort, Alexandre. Une Telecaster 57. Mais le micro grave a un problème. Les aigus sont filtrés. Pas d'aigus. For almost nine months, these films kept the museum teams busy. Nine months during which we were fairly silent, I must say, on the internet to concentrate on making them. The two movies are feature length, more just over an hour for the Concert Retrouvé de Proust, and 45 minutes for Guitar Eros. Obviously, their content is very different, but ultimately, both of them have the same goal which I want to present to you. First, we wanted these films to be more than just promotional tools whose use would have been limited in time as it is, as it is for advertising, for example. On the contrary, we wanted to make them items of heritage interest. What I mean? Guitar Erost is, for example, the result of many years of research on our guitar collection by Philippe Bruguier, a former curator, is here in the Musée de la Musique, and also uh, many years of research conducted by the Museum Labo Laboratory. For several years, this team studied both the guitar's history their conservation and keeping them in a playable condition. Our film promotes not only this scientific work on guitars, but also expands and opens it, opens it up to the future in experiments by musician Seb Martel. In the film, the guitarist wonders, as, uh, wonders, as you can see, guitar in hand, alone in a deserted lockdown museum. And this solitary site becomes a place for original sound exploration, interesting both artistically, you will, you will hear, and with regard also to heritage. <laughs> C'est la première journée d'exploration. Toutes les improvisations que j'ai faites, il y en a des dizaines, des dizaines. Donc j'ai tout réécouté. Euh, j'ai rempli une poubelle et puis il reste ça. Ça, je développe. Là, j'ai développé une petite bossa nova. Et puis j'ai fait ça avec toutes les guitares. Ambassador, 60-62. James Trussard, 1904... Non, 2000, 2000, 2000 et 2000, c'est récent, ça. C'est joué de ça, moi. Steinberger. Ah. 
Flying V Gibson. Flying V Gibson, avril 2000. Oh, il n'y a pas beaucoup de volume. Lab style électrique Hawaiian guitar. As you could see uh, in this extract, the film, the films of the gold is also from a sustainable perspective to consolidate musicians and artists' connection with our collection, with our historical collection. On the one hand, we have director Paul Wazan, who using video tools has shaped a strong identity for the museum. And on the other hand, of course, we have the musician. Here, you meet Seb Martel, who is discovering and getting to know our guitars. Who is he? Seb Martel is one of France's best guitarists and also the close collaborator of Mathieu Chedid, also well known as M. As the 2020 lockdown began, as museums closed their doors and concert tours were cancelled, we got in touch with him. Despite the lockdown, we invited him to the museum to prepare the film. There, Alexandre Girard, our curator in, char in charge of non-Western music, but also um, of electric guitars, uh, Alexandre Girard spent many days with, with him to follow and to guide him in his choice of instrument. Working with Seb Martel increased our knowledge of these instruments, especially their sound potential, and vice versa, working with Seb, working with us, Seb Martel contemplated the history of guitars, Fenders, Stratocaster, Gibson, and so on, and finally he began composing, composing with this history in mind. And we believe that this type of collaboration can also serve our museums in the long term by updating their message and by creating a much needed dialogue with the present. And lastly, the final goal of these films, uh, I would say that uh, unlike with short-lived marketing videos, we did not want to target any any one specific audience, for example, a young audience or pop music fans. On the contrary, we wanted our film to encompass the variety and the different identity of the museum in a way that was sustainable and consistent. There were two ways of doing this. First, during his wanderings, Seb Martel encounters the whole history of music since Renaissance. And second, again to blur any boundaries, he plays with this long history. The repertoire you will hear he has chosen moves, moves from Eddie Lennox to Purcell, from Elvis to Schubert. <laughs> And at least from Carl Perkins to Britain, which I'll get you to listen to. That younger child when it can read With song she learned in a sleep That was so sweet a melody It passed for Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So this film and the film about Proust are still online uh, at the moment, made in very special circumstances during lockdown. They speak about the museum and about its fundamental missions. In a way, we hope that will be still relevant in the coming years after the epidemic. And in the same spirit, the educational team supervised by Delphine has devised a great cycle of remote guided tours of the museum, and I'll hand you over to Delphine to present it. Bye-bye. Hi, I shall complete Marie-Pauline's presentation by telling you about our new educational project at the Musée de la Musique. Remote guide tours for school children. The Musée de la Musique is offering students the chance to explore its extraordinary collection without leaving the school building. Presented live by one of the museum's specialist tour guides, these activities combine learning about the museum's instrument, musical games, and meeting musicians and museum experts via video link. The activities, fun, lively, and filled with music, are a different way of visiting the museum in addition to a possible class visit. The idea for the project originated during the last pandemic. With the museum's closure, we wanted to stay connected with our visitor family and maintain work for the museum's lecturers and guide employed for the season, sometimes with live guest narrators and musicians. We create a video link format for some visits, for holiday activities and also for the annual cycles that began in October. 100 sessions were held via video with over 1,000 participants. Children and their parents were delighted and we've received a lot of thanks for this offer. The Philharmonie Communications Department helped us market these tours, which sold out in 24 hours. The museum wished to prolong this experience and developed a new educational formula for school children that would be sustainable and adapt for the new health context. So our remote guide tools will be on offer for the 2021-2022 season. How a remote guide tool works, the process. A lecture guide gives a video presentation from one of the museum's educational rooms while a class logs in from school. During the sessions, the guide explores a musical themes and converses live with the class. He or she shares photographs, musical extracts, philharmonic concert and video shot in the collection, but also in the museum storerooms or laboratory. The session concludes with musical games and quizzes. We send the class a file beforehand to prepare for the sessions, which last for an hour. The remote guide tools open up several horizons, encouraging the museum outreach and scope reaching out to geographically distant audiences or those that can't make the trip physically. Making these activities a permanent feature of the museum's offer, making people want to come to the museum. This formula can be adapted for other audiences, adults, teachers, socially disadvantaged group, and disabled people, and so on. Five themes remote guide rules will be on offer next season. They will explore the collection in a cross-disciplinary approach and focus on the collection's flagship instruments 
and key figures in musical history. Here are extracts from films, two of which were devised specifically for these tours. Twelve films will be produced this year to be used during the remote guide tours. Some will explore unusual instruments, visit annual, unusual areas of the museum and discuss various museum career, and others will present the musicians who play regularly in the museum's hall. Le Musée de la Musique de Paris présente au public une magnifique collection d'instruments. Mais est-ce que vous saviez, dans les réserves, on y trouve des milliers d'instruments précieusement conservés Aujourd'hui, j'ai rendez-vous avec Jean-Claude Bateau, technicien conservateur, qui va nous montrer les réserves et certains de ses trésors. Venez avec moi. Bonjour Jean-Claude. Bonjour Irina, bienvenue. Merci, où est-ce que tu nous accueilles eh bien, Nous sommes ici dans les réserves de, du musée, donc il y a plusieurs milliers d'instruments dans, dans ces réserves. Et qui a le droit de rentrer dans ces espaces Alors ici, euh, c'est surtout les conservateurs, les restaurateurs et puis certains chercheurs qui viennent étudier des instruments. Donc ils ont accès aux réserves pour les, pour les regarder. Comment ça se fait que tu as, as mis des gants noirs Alors j'ai mis des gants noirs parce qu'en fait euh, notre sueur est un petit peu acide. Donc euh, si on touchait les instruments directement avec les mains, on risquerait de les altérer, d'oxyder un petit peu, notamment les métaux. D'accord. Est-ce que tu aurais des petits trésors à nous montrer Ben écoute, voilà, j'en ai sorti trois. Donc nous avons ici trois épinettes de la fin du XVIIe siècle. Voici une première épinette, une épinette faite à Paris par Philippe Denis en 1672. Ici, nous avons une épinette de Christophe Leuve, faite à Augsbourg en 1678. Et une épinette de Fabi, qui était un ecclésiastique, faite à Bologne en 1698. Trois épinettes, donc. Et qu'est-ce que c'est qu'une épinette Alors, une épinette, c'est comme le clavecin, c'est un instrument à cordes et à clavier. Et les cordes sont pincées. Elles sont pincées par un petit bec qui se trouve sur un socro euh, qui est actionné par la touche. Est-ce qu'on pourrait voir ce petit bec Bien entendu. Et voici le socro. Voilà. Donc on voit très bien le petit bec. C'est la partie blanche qui est sur une petite bascule. Et euh, ici un petit étouffoir qui euh, étouffe la corde quand le, le socro retombe. Bon, C'est un système très très simple. En quoi il est fait le, le petit bec Alors c'est un bec en plume. Donc autrefois on utilisait de, de la plume de corbeau, mais le corbeau est protégé. Donc maintenant on utilise euh, une, des plumes de différents oiseaux. Donc euh, la tige de la plume Tout à fait. Ce sont des instruments assez petits, on a l'impression que c'est des, des petits instruments pour les enfants Oui, alors ce sont des instruments petits, transportables, et euh, qui euh, sont très très décorés, comme on peut le voir, et qui euh, montrent un petit peu le prestige de, de leur propriétaire. En quoi ils montrent ce prestige ben, En fait, ils sont très très décorés. Donc on voit sur l'épinette de Denis, par exemple, le décor en chinoiserie euh, laqué, euh, comme ça se commençait à se faire euh, au XVIIe siècle euh, en Europe. Sur l'épinette de l'œuvre, c'est un plaquage d'écailles de tortue rehaussé par des baguettes en argent et des plaques en argent gravées. Et sur l'épinette de Fabi, l'instrument porte un clavier en os, les palettes sont gravées et on a des, le chapiteau aussi est gravé avec des petites scènes et les petites pièces tournées sont en ivoire. L'instrument se trouve dans une caisse de transport qui est recouverte de soie verte. Quand on voyageait, on pouvait l'amener d'un endroit à l'autre Tout à fait. Mais l'épinette de Fabi a euh, des petites poignées qui permettent de la, de la transporter. C'était des, des instruments qui devaient euh, coûter assez cher, de par justement leur... We hope that this educational offer meet the expectations of passionate teachers 
and curious students. Thank you for your listening.